Okay, so this next section is very short. Um, oftentimes the fourth position for each of these aspects is pretty short, um, which I guess makes sense. Uh, oftentimes the fourth function is kind of seen in the light of an absence of qualities rather than a presence of anything so there's it's kind of difficult to talk about the absence of something although it is it is actually the presence of a you know peculiar orientation towards an aspect and probably a lot more could be said on it but it does have this certain you know it the fourth function seem relatively easy to get um probably out of all of them it's it's relatively easy to like pick them out and to be like, oh yeah, the, yeah, that kind of person, okay. Um, so this is only like two to three paragraphs, but <clears throat> here we go. Um, and this is also the first position that I have as part of my self-typing. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, the fourth emotion received the title of onlooker. Um, it's all, so, sorry, the fourth emotion, the nickname is Gawker or onlooker. I kind of like Gawker better because it kind of has this like goofy, like, you know, you're, you're gawking at something rather than just an onlooker. Um, so anyway, the fourth emotion received the title of onlooker because it does not so much produce as consume artistic products. Although artists are not uncommon among onlookers, the example of the great uh, Goethe will be quite expressive here. Nevertheless, in the artistic sphere, they are more focused on consumption than creativity. There's nothing wrong with the consumerism of the fourth emotion, and there is even a positive side. The onlooker is the best reader, listener, and viewer. He is omnivorous, mirror-like in his artistic perception. Therefore, no matter what level of the functional hierarchy the emotion of, the emotion of an artist stands, when he brings his creation to the attention of the onlookers, he will, find, he will always find a grateful and adequate response. The fourth emotion, so to speak, is emotionally nonpartisan. And the thunder of the first emotion, and the spill of the second emotion, and the whisper of the third emotion, everything is accepted by the subtle, sensitive soul of the onlooker. For him, there's only quality, but not the stylistic orientation of the work, which often allows the fourth emotion to act as a qualified and impartial critic. Um, and <laughs> apologies for the constant, like, yawning and, and burping um, in these videos. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an amateur at this, so, you know, cut me some slack. Um, when the onlooker himself takes up an artistic craft that is not very characteristic of himself, but can be achieved without much difficulty, then this too can be quite interesting. Firstly, his subtle sense of style makes him an excellent uh, parodist Im Im imitator. Um, I think it's just like epigon, but it could be epigone um, and translator. Secondly, the absence of internal taboos, dogmas, and blinders rewards this fourth emotion with stylistic and genre freedom absolutely unknown to other emotions. Goethe himself, who easily wrote in all sizes and genre, genres known to him, is the best example of this. So that paragraph, or the, those couple paragraphs uh, technically, um, they're very focused on art um, and positive you know, sort of optimistic and positive about fourth emotion. So I don't know out right off the rip how useful uh, those will be unless you take everything that he said about art and you can abstract it to emotions and to um, reception of other people's expressiveness, other people's moods. And if you can kind of like abstract it, then I think you, it starts to be a little more workable outside of the domain of art for, you know, typing purposes and kind of getting, getting an understanding of this type. Um, but we'll continue. A remarkable property of the fourth emotion is that in the life of the onlooker, there is a period when his sensitivities does not seem to be the last in his internal hierarchy, but on the contrary, the first. The feeling of the fourth emotion in oneself as the first is associated with the endocrine system and is due to the special mode of operation of the hormonal mechanism during adolescence, i.e. period between 15 and 25 years. The fact is that it was during this period that nature initiated a particularly violent stimulation of the release of emotional hormones, creating the illusion of excessive sensitivity of nature. It was during this period that extreme sociability, passion for dancing, singing, poetry, art, show business, etc. occurred. 
and one gets the impression that nature especially organized emotional seething for this period in order to push the human individual towards reproduction. The special relationship between emotions and reproduction has been much said before. But now the age of the onlooker exceeds 25 years, and it turns out that his true interests lie in a completely different plane. He becomes calmer, withdraws, putting aside his brushes and scores. The secondary nature of feelings and dependence on the emotional structure of others become more and more obvious, and at the same time, the look of the fourth emotion inside oneself becomes clearer and more objective. So that's a little that's a little interesting. So what he's saying is that uh, because the fourth emotion, rightly, rightly so, uh, is is pretty unemotional. It's um, not like the cracker having like this kind of inner volatility or inner um, struggle and then trying to conceal its emotions and being very dry. But the fourth emotion is still, you know, it's still bottom emotion. It's still low or weak, right? So it has this unemotional quality, but it is uh, sponge-like and receptive towards others. So what happens is that during the, you know, hormonal years of adolescence, um, and the time of like teenage years and college and there's so much emotional like pressure that the fourth emotion type can seem quite um, artistic and passionate and all this and all this stuff right um, maybe funny and outspoken whatever but then once those external influences okay because remember the fourth emotion, like the, the, excuse me, the fourth function, like the second is others positive. So it's like receptive towards the influence of the other, of the outside the self, right? So it's very affected by that. But when that recedes, when that external or exogenous influence recedes, what's left behind is actually quite a kind of just emotionally phlegmatic, you know, individual who's not super concerned with their own emotions and they're actually pretty objective and just focused on other things. So it becomes, it be, you might mistake a fourth emotion in their adolescent years for being some other type, but, you know, as they get older, it becomes clear that now they're a fourth emotion all along. Okay. So that's that part. <clears throat> uh, Gawker is not emotionally free. And Napoleon, with his fourth emotion, often complained that his loved ones got used to grabbing him for his, this dependent place for selfish purposes. He told, oh man, uh, Kowlain Kaur, Kowlain Court, or maybe it's Kowlain Kaur, not sure, or it could be pronounced completely differently. Uh, I experienced this more than once with Josephine, who constantly turned to me with various requests and even caught me by surprise with her tears at the sight of which I agreed to many things that I should have refused. At the same time, the idea of the fourth emotion as a perfect emotional chameleon, absolutely colorless at a time of freedom from external inf emotional influence, would look extremely superficial. Indeed, the fourth emotion is very dependent and weak in the face of someone else's expansion of feelings. But this does not mean that in itself it is soulless and blind. Another thing is that it is rarely possible to find out what is like what it is like in itself. In moments of loneliness, only then is it revealed what strength, strengths, depths, and riches are hidden in it. The only problem is that this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen often. Behind the wall, a tape recorder turns on, and the onlooker's foot involuntarily begins to beat out the rhythm. A child bursts into tears in the yard and the onlooker's eyes become moist. His fair half bursts into, bursts into the onlooker's room with a furious scream and immediately rece receives a scream of equal fury in response. So, yeah, I, I guess it's it's like uh, there's, there's a lot of emotion deep down because, again, the fourth position doesn't... The third position is more likely to experience a growth and self-development and maturation because it's processional. But technically speaking, as I've said before, the fourth position actually has the most, it's like the fourth position is a sleeping titan. It's just, you're probably not going to wake the titan up ever. Um, so, it, and it also doesn't, it's not going to wake up on its own. Um, 
or it only rarely, rarely does. So yeah, it's like there is a volcano of emotion behind the scenes, but it's just unlikely to come out except in certain, you know, peculiar moments. Um, and yeah, that's, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe everyone has this to a certain extent. Maybe, I don't know, maybe not. But yeah, I, I have had moments where people have been uh, surprised at my emotionality. Um, and they've, yeah, they just haven't, they didn't see an intensity. Um, and then I kind of like did something usually negative, unfortunately, um, where they're like, oh, wow, or Trekker, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't think you were like that. And it kind of surprises people, but I think it's, yeah, it's just, it's like, usually the emotions are just kind of being let out, especially with first emotion types and second emotion types are being let out more gradually. And what ends up happening is that you aren't letting those emotions out or you're just not like, you're not feeling them. And then suddenly the, you've gotten yourself in a situation where you don't have any, there's nothing you can do. It's just the emotions are just going to come out almost like subconsciously or like as a biological necessity. Um, and at that point, there usually is going to be like an overreaction um, due to a lack of a lack the, a lack of habit of proper escalation, you could say. Um, and I think this this applies to third emotion too. Uh, so anyway, I'll stop it here. That video is going to be really short. I actually, despite my preference in the beginning, I actually, I'm not a huge fan of that description because it's really like three kind of random aspects of fourth emotion rather than he never like gets at the core dynamics of it. He never talks about like the core of it. He kind of just goes into these like three parts of it. Um, which is kind of weird. Uh, I don't remember if he does that for the other uh, fourth positions, but there you go. Uh, some of these are going to be very short. So I'll keep recording in one momento.